April 2nd, 2020. It's only been a month since COVID was officially declared a pandemic. The first case of the deadly Chinese coronavirus making its way to the US. Everything is still pretty fresh. Around the world, everyone is quarantined in their homes. And the McKean family is no different. Maeve and David McKean are quarantining with their three kids, Gabriella, Toby, and Gideon. They're staying comfortable in a house in the Chesapeake Bay. The family figures it's the perfect place to hunger down and wait for the pandemic to subside. The house was out in the country, so the kids would have plenty of room to run around and play. On the afternoon of April 2nd, one of the kids, Gideon, is playing kickball outside with his mom, Maeve. During the game, the kickball gets kicked a little bit too far and ends up in a nearby cove. So Maeve and Gideon decide to hop in a canoe to retrieve the ball from the water. They're paddling out onto the water when they're swept up by the tides or maybe the wind and pushed out into the deadly open bay. They drift helplessly out into 3-foot waves and 29 mile per hour winds. 30 minutes later, a random onlooker sees the mom and child aimlessly floating in the waves. He calls the police at around 4.30, hopeful that help will arrive in time. But that would be the last time Maeve and her son Gideon would ever be seen alive again. 6.30 rolls around, darkness is just around the corner, the coast guard recovers the canoe, but Maeve and Gideon are nowhere to be found. The canoe was capsized and miles away from where they were last seen. A day later, the husband and father broke the news over Facebook to his friends and family. They had been out there in the bay without a boat for nearly 24 hours now, and another night was approaching fast. Maeve and Gideon were almost surely dead. Four days later, Maeve's body was found dead. After another two days, eight-year-old Gideon was discovered 2,000 feet from the body of his mother. On behalf of the people of Maryland, I express our most heartfelt sympathies and prayers to her and to her entire family. The story of Maeve and Gideon is tragic. You could chalk it up to being in the wrong place at the wrong time or a bit of bad luck. That terrible things just happen to good people sometimes. But if you take a look at their family tree, a startling picture starts to emerge. You see Maeve's mother's maiden name was Kennedy. And Maeve's grandfather was a man named Robert F. Kennedy. Yes, that Kennedy. The brother of the former president John F. Kennedy. And what you have to understand about the Kennedy dynasty is that although they are very powerful, the Kennedy family has been riddled with unfortunate death after unfortunate death. Generations of Kennedys dying too soon under suspicious circumstances. So much that there's a name for this bad string of luck. My name is Jake Tran. I make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime with my team. And this is a story of the rise of one of the most powerful families in American history and the unfortunate deaths that haunted them. This is the Kennedy curse. The Kennedy family is known for two big things, their curse and their success. But they weren't just handed their success. The Kennedys built their legacy on skills, skills that would take them to the top of the business and political worlds. Things like public speaking, negotiation, productivity. And if you want to move up in life, you're going to need some of those skills too. That is where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses that give you the chance to explore your passions. Let's be real. The people who make a lot of money are the ones with the best skills. And Skillshare can help you learn the skills you need on demand. No matter what topics you're interested in, you'll find it on Skillshare. There are just so many unique courses. And many of them can help you become a better business person and make more money. Like YouTube success, script shoot and edit by none other than the tech giant YouTuber Marquez Brown Lee. There's also stock market fundamentals and social media for creatives. To start off, I'd recommend the YouTube course I mentioned above because Marquez is an absolute beast to learn from. There are tons of experts teaching on Skillshare right now. Skillshare is constantly putting out new and interesting courses, and you'll never be distracted by ads or interruptions during your class. The entire course catalog is also now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use the link Skillshare.com slash Jake or my code Jake Tran will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. That's Skillshare.com slash Jake with the link below to start learning on Skillshare today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Rosemary Kennedy was born in 1918, the eldest daughter of nine Kennedy siblings and the little sister to the future president, John F. Kennedy. Rosemary was thought to have suffered from a lack of oxygen at birth. The family always said that she was a little slow. 
In her 20s, Rosemary started becoming irritable and acting out more. She would have mood swings and throw fits. It was a complete embarrassment for the head of the family, Joseph Kennedy Sr., who was trying to keep Rosemary's struggle a secret. If he wanted his sons to rise to the top of the political ranks, his family needed to look picture perfect. So in 1941, her father decided to put Rosemary through an experimental new procedure, a lobotomy, a treatment that involved putting a sharp ice pick looking tool into the frontal lobes of the brain through the eyeball and wiggling it around. Yeah, rather disturbing. Her dad had her go through this without consent and didn't tell the rest of the family until after it was already done. And big shocker, the procedure was totally botched. The lobotomy left Rosemary with the brain of a two-year-old. She couldn't walk or talk for the rest of her life. To keep her out of the public eye, Rosemary was locked up in private institutions for the rest of her life, 86 years, until she died in 2005. Although Rosemary didn't die right away, she marked the beginning of many more deaths to come. Joseph Kennedy Jr. was Rosemary's oldest brother and had been preparing for a bright political career. When he was born, his father picked him up and proudly said, this child is the future president of the nation. Joseph had plans to attend Harvard Law School, but he volunteered to pilot a top secret secret bombing mission during World War II. And in 1944, an explosive on his plane blew up early. It completely destroyed the plane, killing Joseph Jr. and his co-pilot instantly. He was 29 years old. Only four years after mourning the loss of their first child, Rose and Joseph Kennedy Sr. would be grazed by death again. Kathleen was the fourth of the Kennedy children. She was lovably known as Kick for her outgoing personality. Two years after her husband died, Kick started an affair with a man her dad didn't approve of, a married man to be specific. She decided to visit her father in Paris to convince him that her new boyfriend was the real deal. When they stopped their 10 seat plane to refuel near Paris, the pilot warned them the poor weather made it unsafe to take off, but Kick's boyfriend insisted that they get back up in the air. Can you guess the rest of the story? Yep, the plane crashed. Kick, her boyfriend, and the pilot all died on impact. Her father was the one who identified Kick's body. By the 1950s, the Kennedys had lost three of their nine children in one way or another, but it was only the beginning of the family's curse. We will climb this wall, face the endless speed. We shall then explore the wonders on the other side. With Joseph Sr.'s eldest son dead, he turns his attention toward his second eldest son, John F. Kennedy. And this time, the kid actually lived long enough to reach his dad's political expectations. JFK would be sworn in as the 35th president of the United States. You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Um, by the 1960s, everyone knew the Kennedy name, and people loved JFK. His approval rating was higher than almost any other president in American history. It seemed like things were finally turning around for the Kennedy family until 1963. In August, JFK's wife, Jackie Kennedy, gave birth to a premature baby boy. They named him Patrick and rushed him to be baptized. Patrick only lived 39 hours before dying of something called hyaline membrane disease. The couple was completely devastated. They had already suffered one miscarriage and a stillbirth before Patrick. But even in grief, JFK had to continue his political campaign. The next presidential election was coming up quickly, and that's when it happened. Here is a bulletin from CBS News. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. November 22nd, 1963. Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas. John F. Kennedy becomes the fourth U.S. president to be assassinated. It would go down as one of the most infamous and controversial assassinations in history, forever solidifying the Kennedy curse. 
but John wouldn't be the last victim of the curse in the 1960s. This is Robert F. Kennedy, AKA Bobby Kennedy, JFK's younger brother. Bobby was moving up the ranks of the Democratic Party. He was a top choice for the Democratic presidential nomination, and he was hoping to fill the shoes JFK left. On a summer night in 1968, Bobby was celebrating. He had just won the California primary, and things were looking good for the presidency. Bobby had just finished up a victory speech at the Ambassador Hotel in California. I thank all of you who made this possible this evening. All of the effort that you made and all of the people whose names I haven't mentioned. And that's when it happened. <laughs> Bobby Kennedy was shot multiple times by a young Palestinian man. The killer claims to have acted in retaliation against RFK for his pro-Israelite stance. Bobby Kennedy died in hospital the next day. It would become yet another hotly contested assassination. By now, four Kennedy siblings were dead and the curse was about to get someone who wasn't even a Kennedy. The youngest Kennedy, Ted, had narrowly escaped death in 1964. He survived a plane crash that killed two other people and got out of it with a broken back and ribs. After making a recovery from the crash, Ted went back to his political career. He was a super successful Senator from Massachusetts. In the summer of 69, Ted was driving his Oldsmobile home from a party on Chappaquiddick Island just after 11 p.m. 28-year-old Mary Jo Kopechny was with him. After taking a sharp turn, he missed the ramp onto a narrow wooden bridge, then the car plunged into a big pond. Ted managed to escape the sinking car, but when he got to safety, he didn't call the police or an ambulance for Mary Jo. He left the scene, returned to his hotel, and went to sleep. It wasn't until 10 hours later that he finally decided to call the police. By then, they had already recovered Mary Jo's dead body from the water. The whole ordeal became known as the Chappaquiddick Incident, and it absolutely destroyed the political career of the youngest Kennedy. After that, the curse would settle down for a little while, all the way up until the 1980s. David Kennedy was the son of Bobby Kennedy, the second Kennedy that was assassinated. David was only 13 years old when he watched his dad get killed. After getting hit with such intense trauma, David turned to heroin and alcohol to cope. After a lifetime of struggling with addiction, he died of an overdose in 1984. David was found dead in a Palm Beach hotel room. Cocaine, a painkiller, and a mood disorder medication were found in his body. It seemed like the curse was coming back to claim the next generation of Kennedys. 1997, Michael Kennedy, another son of Roberts, is skiing in Aspen, Colorado with his family. It's New Year's Eve, and they're all tossing around a football while riding on an expert slope. The game was a Kennedy family favorite. While playing, Michael ran into a tree at 4.15 p.m. The ski patrol arrived within four minutes and started administering first aid, but it was too late. At 5.50, Michael Kennedy was pronounced dead. Only two years later, the curse strikes again, big time. John F. Kennedy Jr., the famed president's only living son, took off from Essex County Airport in New Jersey. He was flying a single-engine plane with his wife and sister-in-law. He only had about 300 hours of flying experience, but told his flight instructor he wanted to do it alone anyways. Their destination was Martha's Vineyard, about 200 miles away over the very dark and expansive Atlantic Ocean. These conditions can mess up even experienced pilots, and that's when JFK Jr. got confused. The plane fell from over 2,000 feet to 1,000 feet in 14 seconds before disappearing completely. It took five days to find the bodies of JFK Jr. and his passengers. The untimely death of JFK's only son shocked the nation, but those following the bloodline know that it was just another death from the Kennedy curse. Let me say that John Kennedy and his sister and later his wife were uncommonly kind to my daughter and to my wife, and uh, this has been a very difficult thing for us personally, as well as because of my position. They are very strong people, and uh, I think they're carrying on as well as any human beings could, but they need the support and prayers of our country.
Kennedys prayed that the curse had ended with the turn of the century. For around 10 years, there weren't any deaths or accidents, but then it came back with a vengeance. 2011, Kara Kennedy, the daughter of Ted Kennedy, is working out at a health club in Washington, DC, when she suddenly dies of a heart attack. Kara was only 51. It was super unexpected because she was in such good health. 2018, Christopher Kennedy Lawford, JFK's nephew, dies of a heart attack at age 63. The actor and writer's death was also completely unexpected. 2019, the curse starts making its moves on the newest generation of Kennedys. At 2.30 p.m., first responders are called to an emergency at the Kennedy family's compound in Massachusetts. They're rushing to help Saoirse Roison Kennedy, the granddaughter of Bobby Kennedy, after an accidental overdose, but they don't make it in time. At 3.14 p.m., Saoirse is pronounced dead at the Cape Cod Hospital. She had methadone, diazepam, ethanol, and three other prescription drugs in her system when she died. Tragedy at the Kennedy compound, a grief-stricken family reeling. Saoirse Kennedy Hill, the 22-year-old granddaughter of Ethel Kennedy and the late Senator Robert Kennedy, confirmed dead late Thursday. Her death came after a long struggle with depression, a struggle she depicted in a school essay, saying, Although I was mostly a happy child, I suffered bouts of deep sadness that felt like a heavy boulder on my chest. Less than a year later came the deaths of Maeve and Gideon Kennedy McKean in Chesapeake Bay. From the outside, the Kennedy name is synonymous with wealth, influence, and power that anyone would be envious of. But on the inside, it's a bloodline filled with endless suffering. And if you want to get a free stock, yes, a free stock with anywhere from three to a thousand dollars, all you have to do is go to public.com slash Jake and create an account. Public is a social stock trading app that is a serious game changer because you can follow other investors right in the app to learn what they invest in, giving you a huge competitive advantage. So go to public.com slash Jake to get a free stock with the link below. Thanks to Public for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you're new here, my name is Jake and we make documentaries just like this one every single week on money, power, and crime multiple times a week for free. So if you enjoyed this one, click the subscribe button below. Remember, you can always dislike and unsubscribe whenever you want so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. If you want longer documentaries that are too controversial to post publicly, click that join button below. We just put out a documentary on the Bin Laden papers that was seized during the raid that killed Bin Laden. Super fascinating video that will definitely get demonetized because it talks about Bin Laden and 9-11 all the things YouTube doesn't like. And you can watch it right now by clicking that join button below. There's a refund policy too. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, just email me and I'll personally refund you the money, no problem. You can follow me on Instagram at jigtrend.io. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Stay dangerous out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.